Making fuel from water is extremely easy, much more easy than they would like you to believe. This is just water, electricity and some baking soda, and about 29 amps. We found that we can inject this in the state of vacuum into our engine and double our mileage under certain circumstances. Now, I'm running a V8 350 and have been for over 30,000 miles. It all starts with the wiring. You get some number 10 gauge wire to conductor and run it to a switch which you put under your dash. I am using a regular 120 volt light switch which is rated at about 20 amps at 125 volts. I'm only running at about 13.8 volts DC. The switch is not worn out or burned up yet where it seems to work flawlessly. This is the ground wire that I connect to my frame. If my battery was over here I would have put it to my battery just for convenience. Now I'm going to set the jug right here next to the master cylinder. I just happen to have room for a gallon jug. This is the vacuum line that goes to your carburetor. This is the master cylinder here that is your brakes, controls your braking. So we're going to take advantage of the vacuum pressure of the engine right here where it's strongest. You can get like 16 inches or more of vacuum at certain times. And we're going to set a pad here and install the jar right here. We're going to put about three quarters full on the water and I've already added some baking soda to it as an electrolyte. Now this is a very fancy cell element design. Don't be, don't be disillusioned by how fancy this looks because very simply you can get three face plates of high grade stainless, some Teflon nuts and bolts and for about five bucks you can make this. See I've notched it for the wires. Put the positive in the middle, put the negatives on the outside, and boom, you've got it. I've just made a more advanced version. You run the wires through the lid like this. I'm going to install this down here, and we're going to seal this up. And we're going to show you how this thing produces gas. This is the positive wire, which I run to the alternator. I've installed a 30 amp auto reset fuse on both sides, positive and negative. So I have redundant fuse protection in case of current overload. And the fuel cell will occasionally pull too much power. We want it to automatically shut off. We connect to the alternator because we have a lot more magnetic field right there, much more energy available than connecting it to the battery. So I highly recommend that you connect it exactly as you see in this fashion. This is the dryer jug. It's just another jug that's sealed off that has a particular way of plumbing. One long hose which goes to the fuel cell, the other hose barely in the jug which goes to the vacuum system of the engine. You put it down in the jug and the overflow is automatically sucked back up into the other fuel cell. We've used poster putty which is liquid Teflon. As a sealant, it is the most recyclable thing you can use. You can use it over and over and over. It's Poster Putty is the brand name for it. Don't endorse any products, but I don't have any choice. It's really the best thing you can use. Plastic hoses is what we use on our vacuum pressure fuel cell. It is part of the thermodynamics of the entire process. Again, Poster Putty placed around the hoses on the vacuum pressure fuel cell in the state of vacuum will suck into the small crevices and will not allow leakage. It has been working flawlessly for many years on my vehicle. I have over 30,000 miles running on the vacuum pressure fuel cell so far and my engine performs incredibly well. It's a little tacky at times. When it gets hot it will really seal well. This shows you some of the production in the vacuum state. That's a lot of hydrogen oxygen gas. It's enough to actually cool the water. There's 25 amps right now flowing through there and we want to run it as close to 30 amps as possible. You can see a tremendous amount of gas. It will actually produce even more hydrogen and oxygen gas as the engine gets going, the RPMs are high, and the magnetic field is coming off of that alternator. Baking soda. Arm & Hammer, highly recommend it. It's the only one that won't foam up. Cheap stuff, you'll end up with foaming in the water and you don't want foamy water. It's gonna have some nasty buildup eventually, but don't worry, it's not a problem in the vacuum pressure fuel cell. The extra dryer jar in front takes care of anything that would fly into the engine. It's a very 
interesting system and has been used for many, many miles. A lot of people sell this for hundreds of dollars. You can build it yourself for about $55 in parts. Most of that is fuses and wires. And it is important that your alternator is able to handle the current. It will pull about 29 amps. So you have to make sure that your alternator is in good condition. When you get this thing hooked up right, you should see water coming out of your exhaust. As it gets going, the amount of water coming out could be tremendous. Depending on your engine, if you have any carbon buildup or nasty stuff in your engine, it will generally blow out right onto the ground in front of your eyes, steam cleaning the engine. This is definitely a technology that has potential. We hope that you take advantage of it. Thanks for watching.